We're looking north towards the polar region. The auroras begin to flicker, and then they seem to move towards us as they increase in intensity. We're watching charged particles from the sun striking nitrogen and oxygen in Earth's upper atmosphere, exciting the particles and producing the northern lights, also known as the auroras. What caused this beautiful sight? Well, on September 9, 2014, an M4.5 solar flare erupted on the sun. M-class is the next to highest level flare class there is. It destabilized magnetic fields holding tons of charged particles and plasma and erupted the material out into space in a coronal mass ejection. We could tell from the satellite data that the blast was coming our way because we saw ejecta coming out of all sides of the central disk blocking solar glare. This is called a halo eruption. And from it, we could tell that the burst was likely headed for Earth, the little yellow dot here. The sunspot that erupted looked like this, a large central core with smaller spots around it. The smaller spots were all negatively polarized as shown by the red color while the central sunspot was positive, in blue. When you have strong positive and negative in close proximity within a sunspot group, they tend to be more likely to produce large flares. She wasn't done yet. While we analyzed the coronal mass ejection from the 9th, a larger, X-class solar flare erupted from the same group on September 10th. This eruption was very powerful, with a surge of energy larger than our entire planet Earth. This flare also bursts coronal particles out into space. Another halo eruption, visible heading out in all directions. This coronal mass ejection was also judged to be coming directly at Earth. So, we began September 11th, 2014, knowing that two fast-moving clouds of energy were heading our way. Now, as we waited for the impacts to begin, the processed images from the IRIS satellite came in. A spectacular surge of energy from the negative spots around the southern portion of the positive sunspot and then a surge from the penumbral region into the central umbral core. Watch on the right side as the energy intrudes into the largest sunspot like an electric wave, revealing the surface features we usually can't see due to the darker hue of the umbra. Later that day, the first impact arrived. The density and speed of the solar wind, in orange and yellow respectively, showed the shock wave. It gave a pretty nice little jolt to Earth's magnetosphere and set us into a geomagnetic storm, G1, the lowest level at a KP index of 5. Earth was already in a radiation storm, which continued, a surge of protons at Earth's polar regions that began when the flares did. On the 12th, the second impact arrived bringing a moderately dense interplanetary shock but which was even faster in speed and which surged plasma temperatures to near 100,000 Kelvin. We briefly endured a level 2 radiation storm at Earth, which can be visualized in the D region absorption here. Three days of solar wind telemetry show the two impacts, with the speed of the larger blast nearly reaching 800 kilometers per second. This is a significant impact, but still much weaker than what would cause satellite damage or disruptions to the power grid. That would take a flare larger than X10, or even X20. This was just an X1. Nevertheless, it indeed sparked a G3 geomagnetic storm, a strong event with a KP of 7. Now, we know that two coronal mass ejections impacted Earth's magnetosphere, and that they produced geomagnetic storms. But what does this really mean? Well, this visualizes Earth's magnetosphere and ambient solar wind. It's relatively calm. But then, the impacts begin to occur, and you can see the pressure building as the plasma and charged particles strike Earth's magnetic shield. The particles begin to integrate into Earth's system, jacking the electric power above our heads. 135th longitude on top, 75th longitude on the bottom. Now when this happens, we get strong electromagnetic perturbations starting at the polar region. These allow the charged particles of the eruption carried by the solar wind to stream in past the magnetosphere, increasing the power in the upper layers of Earth, the ionosphere, and even the upper atmosphere. 
The auroras circle the poles in what's called the auroral electrojet, and as the particles precipitate at Earth, the electrojet strengthens, builds, and expands to lower and lower latitudes. This is why we saw magnificent auroras during these events, and why the streams appeared to be moving south from the polar region. To learn more about these events, and what could happen in a bad one if we ever got a mega flare, watch the Sun series here on YouTube. Just click my name, and when the channel homepage pops up, scroll down to the playlist. The Sun series and other valuable content can be found there. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.